And I would like to clarify a little bit how you energize a turn. Do you find it difficult to turn or to accelerate, making it kind of beautiful in balance, of course? And where do you get the energy from for that turn? Yes? So let's stand everywhere. Go a little bit apart that all of you have a little bit of space. Come a little bit forward and backwards. I know you like to stand next to each other holding, holding hands, but I would like you also to use a little bit your frame. So uh, please make sure that you have enough space around yourself when you put your arms out because I would like to use not only the body, I want you also to use your frame because that is also something important within the turn that helps you actually to balance, to turn in a better way. So if you all stand please on the right foot and have a feel of drop your weight onto this foot so there you feel a very nice grounded action. Do you feel that? Very good. Do you, are you comfortable? Very good. So now of course the first thing is that we understand the difference between our gravity that we need to feed something the standing leg in order to get balance. That amount of balance can be in different ways. It can be a little bit more grounded. The more you allow the weight to rest on your bone the more grounded you get. And that we call actually our stable or static balance. No? That you are on top of the middle of the foot and you are in a very comfortable static position yes now the, as soon as you start moving this part forward and backwards and, and I would like you now just feel that you move your right hip joint forward and backwards you feel that you on the foot you feel like you travel your weight onto the ball of the foot back to the middle maybe to the heel and back forward and rig. can you feel that as soon as we do that we change the body weight forward and backwards we are starting to get a dynamic balance because now we start driving our body weight forward backwards and we feel some dynamic do you feel that can you feel that yes now you can also lighten that a little bit in, in uh, like you take your center a little bit lighter that you feel aha uh -huh, you're pulling a little bit more into the center and put it more on the ball of the foot yes and that is where we see the, the amount of uh, weight we're going down in. For a turn, we need to be a little bit lighter. You can try that one time. Just drop down the weight and really ground yourself. Really feel connected. And now just turn. Just make a spin, turn, and turn, and turn, and turn, and again, and again. Okay. Do you feel? But stay down. Really feel grounded. Make, make this feeling of that you you're brushing your heel on the floor and really make it like the ice skaters, a picture on the floor. <laughs> yeah, feel that. You really put your weight down. How do you feel? Good? Or is it difficult? It's not the best, is it? Because you are actually too much grounded for a nicer, lighter turn, yes? You feel too much. So if you take a little bit energy into the center, you get a little bit lighter and you remain on the ball of the foot. Then you start your upper body to turn, but don't turn yet the lower part. Start this. And follow through in the lower part. Start in the beginning and follow through. And start in the top and follow through. Very good. So you're actually turning more on the ball of the foot. Can you feel that? Instead of on the whole foot. And therefore your body weight is slightly lighter. Yes? So is it then only that we choose our gravity center to be a little bit lower or a little bit lighter? Or does the rest of the body have to work as well? What do you think? What is the rest of the body? <laughs> if this is the middle part and then our leg and then we have a top part, the, 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 the torso, everything has to help to turn. If you want to turn, you turn not only like what we call a hip twist, as the word says, we think we're turning the, and twisting the hip, yeah? We do this. Twist the hip, twist the hip, twist the hip. Do this one time, do this one time. Go really for a twist the hip, twist, and twist, and twist, and twist. 
and twist. Difficult, you see, it's, it's, it feels like the wrong momentum. So even though we call it a hip twist and we do twist the hip, but it's not enough just to twisting the hip because you need to actually take the leg, the foot and the hip. Try that, go a little bit lighter. And now still start from the body again from the top and that is what actually the upper body does. It starts to turn. And then you hip twist, but take the leg and the foot as well. Hop, 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 hop. Ah, is that easier? Yeah, that you feel actually that your gravity center is on top of that leg and you turn the whole leg. Yes, so we not only think about a hip twist and turn the, the hip joint and twisting the hip like we do in normal uh, twist action. Yes, so we actually need to turn the foot, the leg and the center. Very good. So now let's be a little bit more specific about this, what the upper body does really. Yes. So where in the body you feel you can create in the upper body the turn? If you do this one more time, stand on the right foot and feel where you can turn in the upper body. Where is the flexibility in the upper body to turn? What do you think? Ribs? Ribs? They are very tasty. Ribs? <laughs> Yeah. Below the ribs, you feel it down here? More in the back or more in the front? Hmm? No? What do you feel? Towards the back, yes? So what's in the back? is our spine very good and that is actually the part that is flexible and some parts are a little bit more flexible and some are a little bit less not the top on our neck the neck uh, vertebras are very flexible this can be easily turned then we go a little bit lower already they get less flexible they can still work but less why can they do less what do you think or maybe I explain you, I don't ask so much, <laughs> I've been explained to you. So we have these um, uh, more, uh, we call them the, the torso uh, part of the spine, yes? And that connects, of course, to our rib cage, yes? This rib cage is connected with muscles to our these end parts of the spine, yes? And then this one is connected in the front, you have a lot of cartilage that keeps that torso or the, that rib cage together. So because it is all connected, therefore, even though the cartilage is slightly flexible, but not as much. The bone certainly not, is not flexible. So what you really can only turn is your vertebras, yes? But because they are connected to a torso, you, they are not as flexible. Now, if you go a little bit lower, a little bit lower, just under your shoulder blades, there is a, a part on the rib cage where we have two floating ribs. There, do you know that? Yeah, there is, uh, you have to see it once. The, the, this, the top one is much more connected and the lower part is actually two ones that are not connected. This is the area where, you, where the spine is the most flexible. This is exactly the area and this is exactly underneath your shoulder blades. Yeah, and this is why this area, look if you turn it and you really think under your shoulder blades and you turn not the shoulders and the arms, you really try to twist in this uh, vertebras under your shoulder blade. Really try that. Ah, very good. Uh, can you feel that? And you really put it in a vertical because the, the column or the spine is vertical and you really put it here. That is where the flexibility comes from. Then the spine lower, the lombard one, is not so flexible because that's actually where the lombard is, is connecting to our pelvis bone. That's why that is also stuck again. So you, of course you can twist, but you don't do that from the spine. You do that because your hip joints are moving forward and backward. You can try that. <laughs> try that. Can you feel that? Your hip joints move forward and backwards. And of course, upper spine helps a little bit to turn the lombard, but this is actually more or less a stiff, stiff spine. Yes, there is not a lot of movement happening yes also if you do pelvis action forward and backward do you do it in the down part or is it a little bit more from the top supporting to help you to do a pelvis action yeah it's more than the, the upper part that helps you to actually go into this movement yeah can you feel that 
This lower lower part and the coccyx, the last bit of it, is also a, a, a fixed bone. Yes, that is just hanging underneath. So really, this is on the middle part here, on the lower underneath the shoulder. That is where we actually have the most flexibility. So now I want you to feel really the difference because it makes a big difference.